Hi everyone, it's Lindsay and I am back today to share with you the embossed resist technique in your Bible journaling. I'm going to be using this brand new stamp set from Joy Claire Stamps. This is part of their Color by Face series and it's called Noah's Art. I'm going to be working on both of these pages here. So I am starting off in Genesis chapters 7 through 9 and the entire Noah's Ark story goes across these two pages in my Bible. So that's where I'm going to be working today. I wanted to create two different scenes on both pages. And this first one I'm going to start on the left hand side. And it is going to be the scene where all the animals are loading into the ark. So I started off with the boat with the door open. And the, um, I guess it's, what is it called? And the ramp coming down from the boat. Then you have this great image in this set that is two by two animals and it goes from largest to smallest towards the boat. So it's a really great, it gives more of a 3D dimension to your scene. I'm also going to go ahead and stamp a few clouds and the two birds from that same stamp set above the boat. Now I am stamping in Versamark ink and I have a scrap piece of paper under my Bible and I did prep my pages with my embossing bag. Now I'm going to use clear ink for this. One of the reasons that I wanted to use this technique on these two pages is because these stamps are a little bit wider than my margins and my scene was a little bit wider than I had in my margins. But I didn't want to cover up any of those words with any embossing. So what I decided to do or with any embossing or ink because if I were to stamp in black then that would cover up the words as well. So this was the technique that I wanted to go with to really add brightness and color, color in these scenes, but not cover up any of the words. So I'm stamping in Versamark ink, which is a clear sticky ink, and then I am coating this in clear embossing powder. So I am not losing any of my wording in my Bible, which is really important to me. So on the right hand scene, I stamped the closed boat with the waves underneath it. I also stamped a few more of the clouds and then I also stamped the sentiment in the top right hand corner right above this scene. And again, I'm going to cover this with clear uh, embossing powder. Then I have that scrap piece of paper so I just tip my Bible up, tap off, and then all the excess embossing powder falls on that extra sheet of paper and I can funnel it back into my jar so I don't waste any. Now on the left hand side I also added a sentiment which says two by two and now I'm going to start doing some of the um, distressing blending. Now anywhere where I have that embossing powder and I have those images that will resist this ink. I've also went ahead and just masked off a little, I just cut this from, gra or from scrap piece of paper but it's a little hill and I just cut that with my scissors that's going to be where my grass is so I line that up right with the bottom of the boat and I also masked off the boat as well because it does have some grooves in it and I wanted to come back and color those in with some browns which I'll show you in just a moment. I am using my Salty Ocean Distress Ink here and this is going to be the sky ink. Now I'm only going to go up really towards the top left of this page and I'm going to leave a lighter portion right in the center at the top. So I'm gum, my darkest is at the bottom towards where that hill is. And then as I work my way up, I'm going lighter and lighter towards the top and towards the center. So once I had that done, I could go ahead and remove the masking. And there you can see everything below that is perfectly white still. So now all I need to do is take the top portion that I cut, line that up with the line that is already there, and I also masked off the bottom portion of that bow. And now I'm going to take my green ink and work this down towards the bottom of the paper. Now I'm going to really saturate it at this point. I do want those animals to really show up. And right now it's not even as white as it's going to look. Even though that embossing resists this ink, it does get a little bit of buildup. And I'll show you how to get rid of that in just a moment. But right now I'm taking some of that crushed olive distress ink and I am really blending this into the paper very heavily. Now you will notice that as I am going over that, it does build up. 
So what I like to do is take just a dry cloth. This is a baby washcloth. My daughter doesn't use them anymore, so I've got a bunch that I can use to clean my stamps now. And I just wipe away that ink that has gathered up on top of that embossing, and it really brings it back to life. Now to add a little bit of dimension, I'm going to bring in my colored pencils. I'm putting a little bit of shadow underneath those animals, also underneath the boat and along the very top horizon line. To lighten up those clouds, I'm going to put a little bit of white over the top of them. It's not going to completely change them to a white cloud, but it does dull that blue a little bit, so it separates it from the sky a little bit. Excuse my head here. I had to get really close to see where the lines were so I could really get in there and put in this brown on the boat to give it a more wooden look. But still, even with all of that on there, all of the stamping, all of the distressing blending over the top of it, I didn't lose any of those words on the left hand side, which was really what I was going for with this technique. I struggled to find a way to stamp this entire scene without having lost parts of the story because I still want to go back and I still want to be able to read it. Um, so that was my way of coming up with it. Now, before I did any distressing blending on the right hand side, I went ahead and colored in the boat. Now, this has a few waves at the bottom and I do have to get a little close. You'll have to excuse my head. Because everything is stamped in clear and embossed in clear, it was a little hard to see where the stamping was, so I do need to get a little close. And on this one, I'm gonna put down a layer of white over my clouds before I do any blending on them. So I cut a new piece of scrap paper, and this time I put a few little waves in it, just with my scissors, very easy, and now I'm going to blend the top of the sky. I have masked off that boat because I didn't want to lose any of the brown color, and then I'm just going to go ahead and quickly emboss, or not emboss, excuse me, but distressing blend over the top of this, embossing. Now, you will notice that whenever I do some of this embossing, I've got to use a really light hand. These Bible pages are very thin, and they can't handle a lot of pressure on them. They want to wrinkle up, and it's very easy to almost tear them. So you do have to use a lighter hand and kind of build up the color on these. You also can't really rub in a circular motion like you're normally doing when you do any distressing blending. You kind of have to pat and turn and just really kind of try and blend it out that way. You can't really rub over this. So once I was happy with the sky, I went ahead and used the top portion that I had cut, masked off that top where I had already ink blended the sky, and then I brought in a little bit of peacock feathers to start off my ocean. Now I didn't bother masking the boat on this portion, it's just that very little portion right down at the bottom, and I didn't want to miss any of those waves. So I just left it bare, and I'm just holding the top of that so I don't put any tape over the distress ink blending so I don't accidentally peel it up or move it around. So I'm just, again, using that circular padding motion to really press in this color on that page, making sure I get a very nice line where the two meet. Now, just to give this a little bit of dimension and a little bit more color to it at the bottom I brought in a little bit of mermaid lagoon and just use that portion that I had already ink blended on and just added a few more waves for a little bit more depth here they don't really show up in the video but in real life you can see them so once I had that done I added a little bit more colored pencil right along the bottom to deepen up that where the sky meets the ocean. And those two pages were that simple to do. I'm gonna leave you guys with a few pictures of the finished pages. On the left side of the screen, you'll see a few different links you can click on. The top will take you to a video you might enjoy watching next. The bottom left will take you to my blog where I have more information and the supplies I use today. And on the bottom right, that will subscribe you to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and happy crafting.